Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. Today I've got three replays in the tier 10 mercenary light tank, the Tusk. Now if you did like the video, as always, don't forget to like and subscribe down below as it really does help out the channel. And yes, the Tusk, three derp-tastic replays because that is what the Tusk brings. And oh boy, you're going to have to wait for that last replay because oh boy, things happen. And yeah, the Tusk, it's one of my favourite tanks to play, honestly. It's just like the T-49, but it's tier 10 on an AMX-13 chassis, because naturally you've got the Sheridan turret and the 152mm gun. You can have a lot of fun with this thing. You've got 85mm of penetration on this premium HE, which is enough to go through a lot of tank sides and a lot of light tanks and all that good stuff. I was quite surprised I got spotted there by the Panzerwagen. But anyway... You can pen a lot of tanks with 85 penetration, especially in a lot of their weaker spots, like the rears, the sides of some tanks, well, if you avoid the space armor. And you can deal that 910 damage HE round, which is lovely. But naturally, it is a derp gun. It derps by, na you know, derp by name, derp by nature. It, it does like to miss quite a lot at times, and it can be a bit frustrating in that regard. But you can just have a laugh. It's one of those tanks that you can just have an absolute laugh with. You've got great view range on this vehicle with the setup that I've got. You've got it up to 537 meters of view range, which means you can spot really effectively as a light tank. Oh, 50B. I thought he was going to give us the shot there. We were just waiting on that 50. Come on, 50B, do it. Do it. Oh, <laughs> pixel shots. 902 into the side of the 50B. That's one of those. We just, just do it. Just give it to us. Let us have it. And the 50B was like, Sir, you can have my booty. <laughs> and, well, we, we said, Okay, thank you very much, sir. I'll, I'll pen you for 900 then. That's okay. But that's what the Tusk does. That's the kind of fun that you get out of the Tusk. It's just a hilarious vehicle to play. Is it the best light tank in the universe at Tier 10? Hell no. It really isn't. But it's just a fun vehicle. You can have a laugh with it. You can derp shells like that at things like Ruthless for 445. You can get the side of a 50B and pen it for 902. You know, you can shoot the Type 5 Heavy for probably very not very much at all. What are we going to do on a Type 5 Heavy? 126. Yeah, not very much at all. It is what it is. But that's the nature of derp guns. That's the nature of the way these goes. If you get the Tusk, it is always best to fire the premium HE. Now you can see I'm firing full premium HE. Why am I doing that? Just generally because it's better. It's because it's got 85 pen as opposed to the 76 pen of the standard HE, which means there's a few more plates that you might pen more often. But not just that. The premium HE rounds actually have a bigger splash radius. So they've got a 5.11 meter splash radius on this premium HE round. The standard HE round has 3.66, which actually helps to do more damage where the HE shells hits because it means it covers a bigger radius of the tank from where the shell hits, which means you just generally splash for a little bit more. Splash radius is a big factor in doing splash damage. So if you've got a bigger splash radius, the likelihood is for a higher caliber he round that it's going to do more damage when it hits the target but yeah the tusk it has this great view range with 537 meters of view range with the build that i've got you've got a 68 kilometer an hour top speed with a 36.48 horsepower ton ratio which means you can hit that top speed which is lovely Ooh, 4005 that's a lot of pain you have a 22 kilometer an hour reverse speed which means you do reverse around corners pretty quickly as well the reload is down to 15.4 seconds, which is very, very long with the build that I have. And that's because I... Do, well, 14.3 if you boost with food. But 15.4... And that's because I don't run a loader. Or an advanced loader. That is the gun rammer. I don't run that on this vehicle because I don't want to rely on the DPM of the Tusk, naturally. So I make everything else about the tank better. And that helps me get the camo of the vehicle down to 264 meters of still concealment, which is lovely. Again... You got 0.39 accuracy with this derp gun, which is okay for a derp gun, but it's still pretty horrific. With 3.04 second aim time, which again, it's... Oh no, did we pen that? Oh! Oh, beautiful Tusk! Yeah, it, it's still very, very poor. But, this is why we've got it set up like we have. It's a lot better than it was. So what do I run in terms of a crew and equipment on the Tusk? Well, on the Tusk, I do tend to run. Born Leader, Rapid Reload, Sixth Sense, Situational Awareness, Camouflage Expertise, Muffled Shot, Steady Aim, Snapshot, Run and Gun, 
cam camouflage net, the gun stabilizer, and optics. Optics to be able to get that V range up to the 537 meters of still concealment. The gun stabilizer to get the accuracy during rotation and movement down as low as possible because it is atrocious on this vehicle. So I'd do it as much as possible to be able to just keep the gun bloom down. And then all three gun perks naturally because we want to be able to get the camo down to as low as possible so we can play as a light tank and get some good spotting off if we want to. And that mixed in with the camo net naturally getting the camo down to 264 meters of still concealment means that we can actually play as a very effective light tank sometimes as well, which is nice. We don't quite have the camo of a lot of light tanks, but we have the view range. And because we've got the good top speed as well, we can get to aggressive bush locations to be able to spot for ourselves. And if light tanks decide to come after us, well, naturally, we've got a 152mm derp gun, which means that we can just pen them for 900 odd and have a great time while they sit there going, no, my HP, why? You know? Which is a very, very nice thing for the Tusk. You've just got to be able to hit the shots. Because naturally having that 0.39 accuracy at best is what we've got now is not that great. And the 4.38 accuracy during rotation, 2.79 accuracy during movement is still absolutely atrocious. But we've done our best to get it as low as possible. So we finished that game with the first class, the Confederate. 1,371 base XP, the 4.9k damage, the 1,500 assistance. And we had some... There was there was some dirty penetrations in that game. It was rather beautiful. And when Tusk lets you do that, you just get this like, oh yeah, that's great, right? It's derptastic, and you just can't go wrong with it. It's why the Tusk, it's why the T49 is one of my most played vehicle. Well, it is my most played vehicle because you've got the speed, you've got the derp gun. Is the derp gun that good? Sometimes, sometimes not. But on the whole. If you know what you're doing, you can get yourselves and manoeuvre yourselves into good positions to be able to just slap in filthy rounds. And when you do get those filthy rounds in, oh boy, is it delightful. Especially when you pen 4,000 and fives like we did in that last game as well. And just get a dirty amount of damage. You sit there going, oh yeah, that, that's the one right there. This tank does have 10 degrees of gun depression, by the way, as well. Which is absolutely fantastic for playing positions like this on this map, which is a map. Mm. Nominee Nom. It's good old Nominee Nom. So here on Nominee Nom, we've taken the position here at D4. And that's because we get good shots across at the people on the one line. And we can also try and shoot anyone that might spot us at F3, like the Griller. And we can spot the one line, which is quite handy as well. Because we have that 537 meters of view range, we should be able to spot them quite easily in the Tusk. And we can try and derp away. But we did get spotted... With the camo at 264 meters of steel concealment, I'm pretty confident of not getting spotted too often. Oh. Oh. Yes. Yes, Tusk. 890 on the T100LT. That is still a low roll. I thought that was nearly 910 damage. Well, it's still a low roll. But that is, is beautiful. But that, that 10 degrees of gun depression really helps us to get the shots across at the people like that 200 LT at the 121B. And I thought the 264 meters of still concealment will keep us unspotted from the guys that run the one line. But naturally, we were get also getting spotted by the Gorilla 15. And we're just trying to be as careful as possible because I don't want to lose any more hit... Well, I don't want to lose any hit points at this point. And we know that the Gorilla might come after us, which he's still trying. But he's taking a hit from across the way. Can't quite find a shot at that guy. It would have been a very juicy shot as well, being a Gorilla. He's basically got no hit points. We chanced the shot at the Ruthless, and I was like, no, no, don't do it, Ruthless. And we managed to get back behind cover before the Ruthless managed to get the shot into us. Sadly, our shot went to the moon. But that was because I panicked. I saw the Ruthless just start to turn at me, and I was like, no, nah, no, nah, I, I ain't about that life. I'm not sticking around. But look what we've got. Is that the butt of the E5? Hell, oh no, he's below the ridge line. He managed to, that's one of those cases where someone doesn't know you're there, but manages to just about get back behind cover and you sit there going, oh, the timing, that is sod's law. But we are spotting the guys out on the one line, which is why we're sticking around these positions. And we've managed to amass 2.4k spotting so far, which is good times. 890 damage, and we're just looking to see if we can get the shot into the 121B. And 380 damage down the 121B. If we can get rid of that guy, that would be great. Because he's spotting that TD and heavy tank down there. And he's also keeping them pinned, which means they're not being able to shoot the things that I'm spotting. So if we can get rid of the 121B, glorious. And if we can then try and get a cheeky shot into the E5 as well, that would be great. We do manage to get a shot into the Ruthless that we spotted for 318. Also tracks them in place, which is great, again, for having that 152mm derp gun. If you hit people in tracks, 
the likelihood is you will track them in place and they will not be able to do anything about it and they will maybe feed you more tracking assist and more assistance is always great but hello mr e5 we aim for the engine deck and oh we didn't pen it but we did set him on fire I was hoping, because of that shot that we had there, the likelihood with HE rounds being HE rounds is that I'll hit the tracks and I'll only splash the E5. So what I was aiming for was to aim high and the HE rounds might have actually penned his engine deck. But we got lucky in the fact that we didn't pen the engine deck. We hit him 347. But then we also set him on fire, which we take that. We'll take it. But is that the butt of an AVRE? Yes, please! 752 into the back of the AVRE. That is satisfying. Get out of my game, Mr. AVRE. See, the satisfaction levels. It's the difference between playing something like an AVRE and the Tusk, right? Because when you've penned something in the Tusk, you know you've done it right because you've hit the right spot. Things like the AVRE don't have that shine to them when you pen people because it's got, like, either 180 or 240 pen and you know you can pen a lot of things with that sort of penetration whereas you've got 85 penetration on the he you've had to work for that penetration and when you get it it's it's great and you get that derp gasm and you go yes love it let's go you know so we're trying to keep the Turan and the other TD lit up. And oh my goodness me. We are very lucky to have not taken a hit from the Ruthless. I decided I was going to take a hit from the Griller just to finish him off. And we missed because we just didn't sit there for long enough. When we knew that the Ruthless had fired and the Griller had already fired and penned us, we should have sat and made sure we were aiming the shot at that Griller 15. But hey ho. Just looking for the underside shot of the Fosh and... Oh, you're seeing... You are seeing the Tusk at its worst right now. We've hit some dirty shots, right? We've hit some great penetrations. But you've also seen the downside of the 152 mil gun. You've seen the derpy side of it. It has missed some shots in this game that we've gone... Oh, did you, did you have to? The shot on the Griller was... I mean, we didn't fully aim it, but we still... It was one of those that you said, going, did you have to miss that? The shot on the Fosh again was another one of, did you really have to do that, Mr. Tusk? Did we have to? But we did manage to get a snapshot, though, on the Ruthless. And naturally, it flew true and just killed him, because why not? We're up to 3.3k damage with 4.4k as 4 .4K assistance. And the Turan was up there, and I, he just got unspotted as we were coming over. And I was thinking... Did he pull back behind the ridge, or did he just have filthy camo and not get spotted? But we ended up spotting him as we came back over the ridge line, which means we've managed to push our assistance up to 5.8k assist. And we just couldn't quite get there to get another satisfying penetration to the Turan, but we'll take it. Finished with the epic victory, two kills, 3.3k damage, 1,495 assistance, 5.8k assist as well. So, what, quick maths, that's like just around 9k combined-ish? Somewhere around there, around 9k combined. Really great game there for the Tusk on Nominee Nom. And we're on to the third and final replay. And, oh boy! It's going to get Mimi. And we are going to have a great time here on Corellia. So we've loaded our round. I was thinking, where do I want to go? Do I want to try and go for the cheeky middle push and go up onto the hill through the middle of the map? Or do I want to just push the ABC line and see what we can find, see if we can get up behind some people, get some derp shots off, and just help the team in that regard, and then try and get behind the guys that go down the 890 line. So I decided, okay, you know what? We've had a couple of people come down the ABC line. It doesn't always happen. So we're just going to push this way, see what we can spot, see what we can derp, and see if we can get the team moved up. Because they've got quite a lot of people already spotted down the HJK. And there we've found the artillery already. We're aiming it up. Please. Oh, RNG gods. Yes, 929. That is a way to start. We've got our first penetration of the game. First shot, first pen, 929 on the artillery. And Mr. Piggy is sizzling. We like when Mr. Piggy is sizzling because we can get our juicy bacon crispy fried. And there he goes. Good night, Mr. Piggy. So we're just moving up again. See if we can spot all people. We're going to chance it. Hello, Turan. RBRT. He misses 911 into the Turan. Yes, let's go. That is RNG at his finest. He managed to miss us firing his heat shell in the first minute at a tusk. And we managed to pen him with our HE for 911 beautiful scenes but i want to keep progressing because it seems to be that there's only a huntsman and a turan on this flank 
If there's only those two guys over here and we've wiped out the artillery already, that means we can get up behind the enemy quite quickly and this could get filthy. But Mr. Turan drives out. We didn't pen the Turan, but we did track him. I was, I didn't think he would actually drive out, but the moment he just pushed forward as quickly as possible, I was like, I've got to get out of his gun line. I don't want to take a hit for 950 because he, he could quite easily roll for 1,000. Now we're nearly loaded. The Huntsman's coming after us. RBRT shut down the Huntsman just like that. Good night, Mr. British Tier 8 Premium Medium Tank. Rolled to 2.4k damage with 2.1k assist and a kill. And it's been one... It's been 2 minutes and 20 seconds. Or, yeah, 2 minutes 20. We've had a fun time already. There's still 11 tanks left on the enemy team. And they are all... They are all on the HJK. And we are going to get up behind them. But as we're on the way, it's like, Hello, Mr. Sheridan. That's awkward. He also has a derp gun. Oh, no. I have to pen that. We had to pen that, otherwise we were losing 910 damage. It flew through, hit the turret of the Tusk and killed it. Not the Tusk, the, the Sheridan and killed him. And now we're behind the whole enemy team. This is Butts R Us. We like Butts R Us. Let's go. Right, let's see what we can pen. So we're just aiming up. We're seeing what we can shoot. I want to be able to pen something. But we've got the back of the eyes for when we put the shot in. Because I was just looking to see what I could shoot and see what was in a perfect place for me to get. But people aren't actually in a good spot for us to shoot them in the back end and there that's there we go that's what we want the contra caro mark two we have his butt aiming for the butt and we kill a centauro 45t did we mean to kill the centauro 45t no but we'll take it i really wanted to get some penetration to the back end of these guys oh the t44 hasn't realized though 908 <laughs> good night mr Terry. soviet Tech tree medium tank. Oh, that was juicy. But the Highlander and the sh the Chieftain have realised. They've realised we're behind them. So now we're just about the splashing life. We're just going to have to keep waiting to get unspotted, poke out and shoot these two guys every single time we get unspotted. It's just about keeping the gun firing and keeping on whittling their hit points down. So we're unspotted. We make sure to drive backwards as slow as possible and then get the shot in. Because if we move back too quickly or move the tracks, the aim circle is going to be massive and it will mean that we have to sit there waiting to aim it too much. But naturally, the shell did something and we hit them for three. I think we hit the gun of the Chieftain, but we only did three damage. We go for the drive wheel. Well, not for the drive. We go for the tracks of the Chieftain. And that's because naturally, we're not going to pen a Chieftain or a... Highlander from the front. So what we want to do is track them for our team It keeps them pinned in an easy spot for them to be able to do damage and it will also feed us some tracking assist So once again, I'm on spotted right and I was thinking about going for the back of the Contra Caro But he drove off so because we're on spotted it may as well try and get rid of the IS-4 Because the IS-4 while he is hauled down in that position is basically not going to be deal He's just he's not going to get killed by my team so, if I use my derp gun, all I have to do is splash him to death and finish him off just like that. Basically, I got rid of the best target for my team because the, the, all these guys that are with us would have to pen the IS-4. And the IS-4 is a bit of a hard nut to crack. And especially in the position he was in, he wasn't going to get penned by most of the team. So, I may as well shoot that guy, splash him and get rid of him so that it's easier for the team to move on and progress the fight. We hit the Highlander on the move as we were crossing over with the RBRT, but he's currently still alive, but he's out of shots. He's fired all three. I was thinking of going for the tracks again because maybe if I... Because that's the other thing with splash radiuses is that if you have a derp gun in, it's a big thing for the Type 5 Heavy as well, or the Sturm Tiger, is if you can't pen them with the HE... If you land the shot, you can see me aiming low there. If you land the shot underneath the tank, so hit the tracks underneath the tank, the likelihood is you'll do a lot more damage with your splash because the splash radius will help you with that. And naturally, it will be splashing on a weakly armoured section of the tank. And that is the underside of the vehicle because naturally the underside of a tank has basically no armour. So you are actually going to splash for more damage if you're just going for the splash. But I digress. We're up to 6.6k damage with 2.1k assist. Well, we're having an absolutely cracking game here in the toss. 6.6k damage. Well. And there's two tanks left on the enemy team. There's the Contra Caro and the E4. And what I'm going to do is close the distance. Now, these two guys could quite easily just drop down and kill me if I get too close. So I've just got to be careful as 
as careful as possible. I want to try and poke around this corner as cheekily as I can to get the shot in. We snapped the shot at the Contra Caro, but sadly it misses because, well, we, we, we snapped it in. And I'm thinking maybe there's a bombers on here. If, if these two are really close to each other, I can shoot the E4 in the side and possibly kill the Contra Caro as well. And that would be quite funny. But they are. So we get the shot into the tracks of the E4. And again, maybe if someone shoots the E4, I'm going to get tracking assist. These two are in a very, very awkward predicament. It is 4-2. So it could be quite awkward if they start shutting people down. But we're just waiting for the E4. He's coming after us. Good night, Mr. E4. Heichi into the tracks. Finishes him off. And luckily, the Contra Caro Mark II gets shut down. We were running low on ammo there. But we secured our top gun with that kill on the E4. Glorious times. We're finished with the victory. Six kills. 7,094 damage. 2.1k assist. Again, another 9k combined. But this time, 7,000 damage. Top gun, the Ace Tanker. 2,088 base XP. A really great game for Tusk, which is honestly a delightfully meme tank to play. You can have an absolute laugh with the Tusk. I really love playing it. It's why it's like my third most played tank. And yeah, the t it's just it's great fun. And it, I think the contracts at this point for the Tusk is probably coming towards the end of it as well. So a lot of people that have been working towards it should hopefully be earning it right now. So as always, everybody, thank you very much for watching. And I'll see you next time. Success.